There's a part of this world that weaves the best of East and West into one authentic tapestry. A city with a pulse, yet known for its beautiful pockets of serenity. Home to nearly 20 million people. And the largest city in China, Shanghai. You could have the best places to photograph, but the most important thing is to always have the best equipment to capture that. Now for this trip, we're relying on the new Canon EOS 550D. Trusty Digic 4 processor, 18 megapixels, it's great for details. Step your bag. Thanks! What the Digic 4 processor offers is fast processing and natural colour reproduction. It powers up to 3.7 frames per second of continuous shooting. Oh, hey, check out my really cool fisheye lens. Oh, you finally bought it, Carissa? Yes, I'm so excited to try it. For me, I just bring the essentials, an 18 to 135 mm lens, so I'm well covered. Make sure it's well protected. And we're good to go. People Centre right now, this is the definitive focal point of Shanghai, the administrative and cultural centre of the city. Certainly the perfect place to start our photography adventure. Okay. Okay, first up, holding the camera. Now this is really important because the correct grip steadies the camera and of course helps you to compose your shots more effectively. Notice how that frees up my right hand to trigger the shutter. You can also look through the viewfinder or, if you like, there is a live view shooting on the LCD. Next, click the AF button here for autofocus. What you can do is do a half press to adjust the focusing. And then, happy with that, do a full press for the shot. Very nice. Easy. Our first momento. Very nice. I like it. And you can play back your shots this way. Look here. What I love about the 550D is how your shot will fit fully in the brilliant 3-inch wide LCD screen. 1.04 million dots. What you see is literally what you get. Now simply press the menu button if you need to adjust basic settings, such as brightness, date or time. Common features you find on a camera. Lens release, memory card slot, mode dial, on auto for now. Canon also has a new battery grip. Very useful for taking a portrait. It provides a firmer grip and the shutter release is easy within reach. Remember, practice makes perfect, so have fun with it. I love the French concession. You know they call this the Paris of Asia? It's true, I can see how photographers can get inspired here. But you know, to translate their inspiration into beautiful pictures, you do need to know the bare basics. And one of these is exposure. Exposure is the quality of light that falls onto the sensor, which captures the picture. True, photography is all about light. It makes or breaks the picture. Very true. This 
is not the French concession. This is 696 Way High Road, which houses more than 30 artists. Century-old building that has studios and galleries. It's very intimate. I know why we're here. Tons of windows. Tons of windows to illustrate exposure, which is achieved through what I like to call basic three. ISO, aperture and shutter speed. Changing any one of these elements will affect the other. So as you adjust the settings, keep the other in mind. So Carissa, the quick control button gives you access to all these settings, right? A star. <laughs> aperture and shutter speed. How do they affect the amount of light that hits the camera sensor? Picture this, we're in a slightly dark room with a window just like this one. Now, aperture is how wide you open the window. And shutter speed is how long you keep the window open. Now, both these elements affect the amount of light that falls into the room. Have a look. Do you see that? It's very much like how light hits the camera sensor. We measure aperture in what we call f-stops. The smaller the number, say f2.8, the bigger the aperture, which means that we're opening the window wider, allowing more light to enter and hit the sensor, giving us a brighter picture. Now, if we're working with a bigger number, say f16, that means we're narrowing the opening of this window. Now, as we move from an f-stop with a smaller number to an f-stop with a bigger number, we're actually reducing the amount of light that's entering the sensor. Now, let's do a little test here. Let's say F3.5. Okay. And uh, what you can do also is to look through this viewfinder and adjust your aperture or look at it through this LCD. Very nice. Now the next level would be F4. So let me just adjust that. Okay, and there we go. Beautiful. And the next thing we want to do is F5.6. Adjusting that, okay. Very nice, so on and so forth. Not that difficult, right? ISO is easy. It simply refers to the sensitivity of the sensor to light. You adjust it using this button. Now, it goes from 100 to 6,400 or even up to 12,800 in very low light situations. Now, if you don't have a tripod, a high ISO gives you the opportunity to shoot in darker areas because it's more sensitive to light. Wow, now we're talking. This is my favourite part of Shanghai, the old city. You can literally feel a sense of history, but look at the hustle and bustle. All around me, the best place to play with shutter speed. Now, shutter is what's on the camera, and shutter speed is how long or how fast you like to leave the shutter open for light. This is measured in fractions of seconds. See here, 1 over 250, 1 over 500, etc. Now just remember, the bigger the denominator, the faster the speed. That means you're choosing to close that shutter quicker. That's great for freezing a movement. Remember this mode dial here? If you're experienced, you can control your own settings and turn it to manual mode. Or if you like, you can also turn it to TV. Shutter priority, where the camera decides your aperture while you decide your shutter speed. Oh look, there's a kid. Shutter speed 1 over 125. Nice. So remember, the longer you leave your shutter open, the more prone you'll be to blurred pictures. So the next time, quick action, quick shutter speed. A more dramatic effect, panning. Set a slow shutter speed to blur the background and emulate the subject's movement to keep it in focus. This takes some practice. Good shot for a quick shutter speed, huh? I love shooting trains. I love how they connect different cities.
Now, we already know that a slow shutter speed will help you blur anything that's moving in your picture. This time, if our friend will just keep still... Another function you can play with, continuous shooting. Just press the quick control button. See how it's on your standard single shot right now? Change this to the continuous shooting mode and press and hold onto the shutter button to take multiple shots consecutively. Sometimes we do want to capture motion in its process and the effect can be really gorgeous. But usually in such situations when we need a slower shutter speed to capture the motion of the car lights behind us, we do need to get a tripod to avoid getting that shaky effect in your pictures. For example, attach your camera on the tripod, click it left and once you hear the click, you're good to go. And one thing to remember is that when it comes to exposure, there is no fixed magic combination that will work in every single setting. It really depends on what you're shooting and the elements within that picture. To minimize any movement in your camera, you can always use the Canon remote control, the RC6. But remember to set your camera to the self-timer remote control mode, then just press the remote control to the camera to get your shots. This is just all right, but that's beautiful. Wow, look how beautiful it is. You know, photographers live for the morning light. Everything is so much gentler, so much more serene. Okay, come on, let's make the most of the light. Hey, if uh, full auto is when the camera decides all settings, what is P? Program AE. That's when the camera decides your settings automatically, but you can fine-tune it. Okay. How your pictures are lit depends on your exposure settings. It's really all about the balance between ISO, shutter speed and aperture. But apart from the brightness of your picture, aperture also affects what we call depth of field which is basically the focus relationship between your background and your subject. Okay, quick, take my picture, take my picture. <sighs> okay, just hold it. So we have the beautiful skyline of Fudong and a buddy who's constantly bugging you to take a picture of her just to prove that she's been to Shanghai. And to pacify her, we'll need to have everything in focus, both the background and your friend. We'll also need to have a wider depth of field, which is popular for most landscape shots. Alrighty, nice one. Hold it. There you go, big smile. So, set the aperture to something like F16. But F16 allows very little light onto the sensor. The bigger the number, the smaller the opening, right? So we need to balance that by adjusting the shutter speed so we can compensate for the lack of light. Let's try 1 over 30th of a second. Another one, another one, safety shot. Well, if your buddy is as vain as mine and she wants the attention all to herself, well, we need to have a narrow depth of field, not so much of the background in focus. So let's go full on on aperture, which is great for portrait shots. Now, you could decide on the aperture by turning the mode dial to AV, aperture priority.